our next question comes from Seth Palmer, who asks, and this one hits during lockdown. What band do you regret missing the chance to see live? Ooh, I'm trying to think of like any that. So, okay. I've never seen Metallica live and, you know, whatever you want to say about what Metallica is nowadays or, you know, was, you know, post black album or whatever, like Metallica is, I rightfully consider one of the greatest metal bands of all time. And so it's not that I actually had a chance to go see them, but I will say that. So right when the black album was coming out, my hometown in Northern California, there was a venue there called the Phoenix theater. Uh, I grew up, basically hanging around that place. Uh, It was a a converted old theater that had been turned into an all ages venue, like local skate youth hung out there and built skate ramps on the floor and all that kind of stuff. Um, And somewhat frequently bands would use that venue as like a jumping off point for a tour. Like they would go there, they would play a show like to get ready for like a larger tour. Um, And I started hanging out there around like 93 and right, like I just missed this window by a couple of years. Metallica played there right before they launched into their tour for uh, the Black Album, uh, and that was just like right before I got into that scene. Before I knew the venue really that well, like I just I it never I wasn't in a place where I would have gone there to that show, and I was so mad that I it, once I found out I was like, wait, Metallica played here a couple of years. What the fuck? What the hell? How did I miss that? Because it's like a nine hundred person theater. And it's, you know, it's, it's like good sized, but it's intimate for like a band of that size. Like I've seen like Slayer there. I've seen the Deftones play there. And, you know, when you're in it, it's like, yeah, there's a big crowd, but it's not big enough to where it feels like you can't hear the music or you can't kind of, you know, really feel like you're just in the show. And so like that is one I would have loved to have gone to. Yeah. Well, I have like a ton. Honestly, I have a, I have a ton. One that sticks out is. The two groups, um, both legendary, both that. So sometimes you just feel like, hey, I'm missing them this time, but I'll just catch them next time, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. And Radiohead played Minneapolis, I believe, in 98, 99 ish. So they would have been touring still on um, OK Computer, like pr- prior to Kid A coming out. Right. And I didn't go. Friends of mine went. I guess it was an amazing show. They're doing most like the OK Computer album. And they have never been back to Minneapolis. Wow. Since then. You know, so it's just like you don't you don't think at the time like you're missing your only chance. Right. Another thing that happened is um I think it was probably the same time frame, late nineties. David Bowie played at the Roy Wilkins Auditorium here. My roommate went, I didn't go, and then he came back one time and I didn't go again in oh four, I think, and then he, you know, he never came back when he was alive. Right. So it's just, I don't know. Those ones just bother me because they're like, you know, really legendary kind of artists. And I, I could have gone and you just sort of, I I get, I'm getting that way with a lot of people, you know, just like all those like kind of sixties icons are getting like older and like, can they still really play Yeah, and and go out and do stuff? And like, you sort of another one that really, I really regret because again, you take it for granted is the Ramones. Like they, Mm -hmm. they toured so much and I'm sure, you know, you know, you out in, you know, out there was getting them a lot too. You know, they, I felt like they came through every year. I just was like, oh, I'll get them next time. I'll get them next time. You know what I mean? And yeah. I never did. That, that's another one that totally, they played at that venue that I referenced. Uh, but that was again, like, you know, in the late eighties, actually before I lived there. So, you know, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to see them there, but yeah, I would have totally loved to see the Ramones live. But, yeah. So you got to go when you can go. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. It's like a weird, it's like a weird, uh, you know, like you said, those artists from the sixties and seventies are are aging. And if they can play anymore, they're, you know, staying at home and doing it. Uh, I, I'm of two minds with it where like there are artists that are currently playing that I'm like, I well, not currently right now, but at least they're in the early stages or mid stages of their their career where I'm like, "Ah, I'd really like to be able to see them, but you know, it's probably going to slip. I'm not going to, not going to make it to that concert. And then there's like Paul McCartney, never seen him live, but I grew up with the Beatles, you know, hooked right into my veins. Uh, uh, Bob Dylan and Billy Joel and Elton John, just like classics. Like I should check these off my list and it probably will never get to because they're too goddamn expensive and yeah. they don't I mean, come around I often think, enough. I think Elton no. and Billy are both kind of done. Yeah. Are they completely done now? Ah, Paul man. is still touring. Uh, and I will say that uh, I, I am not the biggest Paul McCartney fan in the world. Like I like the Beatles, but I've, I've never been super solid on his, uh, his, his solo stuff. But 
So when I when I was I used to work at Harmonix and I was there when they were working on the Beatles Rock Band and one of the things that was like a, a perk of of working on that game was that a bunch of us got invited to go see him play at at Fenway Park. Um, oh wow. So we went, and I went, and I'll, I'll say this, even as someone who is not the biggest McCartney fan, his live show is incredible. Like, the energy of that show and his performance is just off the charts good. Wow. How does the audience skew? Is it younger folk? It was older. I mean, it, it, but I wouldn't say that it was exclusively that way. Like, I definitely saw, like, a number of young people there, a lot of parents with their kids who were, like, very yeah. enthusiastic about the show. Like, it was... It was it was a it was a I, I, not a fully diverse crowd, but it was it was more diverse than I thought it would have been. Nice. I think there's sort of people just go as sort of for like the cultural institution of the Beatles. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think people just want to see the you know kind of the last thing that's left from that. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's that's half of mine. Like like I said, I grew up with the Beatles. My mom was a big Beatles head, uh, and I uh, I like. Having grown up in a very small town, in very small towns across the Midwest, and having been nowhere near any sort of reputable performance venues, it was very hard for me to like miss seeing somebody important because I was like, there's no way in hell. I'm 13 years old, and the nearest venue is Grand Rapids, four hours right. away. I'm not going to make that, you know? So a little bit of a weird uh, ontology of like who Jason gets to see and who does. I'm only 27. I'm too young to have some of my favorite <laughs> artists die before I can see them live. Yeah, totally. Uh, I, I so, will say one, one I checked off the bucket list uh, a year or two ago was Judas Priest, who uh, I, I had never seen. Uh, I like Judas Priest a lot. My girlfriend loves Judas Priest. She loves Rob ooh. Halford and she had never seen him live either. Uh, so we, they were on tour with deep purple and we drove up to like, it was, they were playing upstate New York. So we drove up there and spent the weekend up there and went into the show uh, up at like Bethel Woods, and I'll tell you right now, Judas Priest still rules. They like Rob Halford for for being as old as he is. He's got to lean in a little harder, but the, he hits those high notes in a way that I wow. was not even expecting him to still be able to do. It was a really killer show. Deep Purple also very good. Older, definitely not doing as much on stage, not as much energy, <laughs> but still put yeah. on a pretty good show. MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends, and getting better. The deepest dive is the best, most thorough discussions about games on the internet. Prove us wrong, please. The MinMax Show podcast airs every Thursday. Patreon supporters vote on what we stream every single week and a whole lot more. Give us a shot, try subscribing to the YouTube channel, and we hope we can win you over. 